the Divine Wings of Tragedy is the is the third overall studio album by Progressive and Power Metal Band Symphony X. This is the third record that I'm reviewing with them, so that is a bit convenient there. Uh, the last two that I did were uh, V, the new mythology suite, and Twilight in Olympus. So we're actually, you know, going back and back further, and not actually, you know, progressing in in their catalog. But that is really, really far searched by me. So, uh, but yeah, that that is all I am. If you have stayed here on the channel for a while, I'm really, really weird. Um, and Symphony X is a bit of a weird band, if I'm really honest. Uh, that is not a um, no. I'm not offending them. I'm not picking on Symphony X. I'm just saying that they are unique in a way, and that is you know always good if uh, bands are unique. Um, and this is uh, you know the the findings of tragedy. Um, I've heard you know things about it that it is a great record that it is one of the best uh, of its timeline of '97. And I can definitely say that you know. It is probably the greatest thing that I've heard about this band. You know, uh, V, the new mythology suite, was uh, really experimental, really progressive. Uh, Twilight and Olympus was a bit of a letdown. It, it was a good record, but not the best. Um, and then we get to this record. We have overall, I believe, also nine songs on this. Uh, yeah, we do. Um, and where do you start with this record? Um, yeah, I guess at the beginning, so we're gonna do that. Uh, of Sins and Shadows is uh, a bit of a darker tune. It is not your typical Symphony X song, but it's you know it still stays true to the 2D Symphony X form. So we have a lot of you know power metal moments on there. Um, you know the band talking about uh, really morbid things, Sins and Shadows. If you couldn't read that from the title, so this is a great opener, uh, written by Thomas Miller. I really enjoyed this one. It's really dark, uh, really dark undertone to it, with also you know some signature moments from the band. Great stuff. Um, and then we get Sea of Lies, which is a um, yeah actually a bit more slower than of Sins and uh, Shadows. It is a bit more slower. It, um, it's only four minutes long, so it doesn't go you know too far in that department. It doesn't uh, go too progressive, but it still you know shows the uh, signature sound from symphony x again and uh, yeah this song is really you know you can really hear the bass on this i really love the bass parts on this on this track i, th I think it's actually really great and although it's one of the shortest though um, i still really really enjoy it um yeah and you know it's, it is a great follow-up arguably even better than uh than that track and out of the ashes is uh, the third track and this is just one fast paced song you know the production is crisp on the entire record and especially on this song though i really love how this song is produced it is really produced uh with a lot of crisp if i say so myself uh it is the shortest song of the record but that um it, that doesn't say you know that it is um that 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 it is you know uh, week. It is actually really fast paced. It is a great track to listen to. I really love, you know, uh, the shredding moments on this um, from Michael Romeo on there. I really love that he, uh, you know, shreds on the song a lot. I really love the fast pacing on this track. Out of the Ashes is a great track. One of the best Symphony X songs in my book. I love it. It is a great track. Um, and then we get one of the longest songs of the record. Not the longest. We will get to that. Uh, then we get the accolade, which is almost 10 minutes long. Uh, this, by the way, requested by Rock Do, if, if I didn't say that. Um, and the accolade, you know, is uh, also a great track. I really love this track as well. Um, I really love, you know, that, that, that it is progressive. It's, uh, yeah, again, sorry guys. Um, I think, you know, this is the last record that I'm gonna mention the band, but this, uh, this song really sounds like it's, you know, isn't inspired from Dream Theater. Um, I'm saying that in every Symphony X video. I, I'm yeah, I'm gonna quit. I'm I'm gonna quit with the comparisons because they're gonna get a bit annoying. It it just sounds to, you know similar to me, you know. Um, but yeah, that is the main reason why that is is because 
the songs are almost 10 minutes long and it really is progressive you know it goes so many plays on uh, you know in such um, I want to say short time but it, it is a really long time but it feels really short you know you know what I'm saying um, yeah the song's 10 minutes long but but because you know the band keeps you uh, captivating the band keeps you uh, captivated throughout the whole runtime of this record and you really feel like you know the time just flies by when you listen to the accolade. I, I really cannot describe this track this is one of the tracks that I can't describe because you know it is just that epic it just throws everything at the wall and everything sticks that is basically you know what this song really does it tries a lot of new things it, it covers a lot of ground and it just works it all works it is great I love it uh, yeah I love the song then we get uh, the Pharaoh which is the fifth song uh, yeah this is written by the entire band I believe and you can definitely hear that you know the the, the songwriting is really crisp on this song I really love it when bands you know write their own songs as an entirety of the band some bands you know give only one uh, songwriter and he uh, uh, you know the problem that I have with that is that uh, that writer can have writer's block you know at the end and if everybody from the band can add something to the music and it is good then you have a real really really special thing there going on and you don't mostly don't get writer's block because you have more people thinking about it maybe that is retarded maybe not but you know that is me saying that uh, yeah that uh, writer's a band and you will probably you know write better um, because nobody is retarded I think or in the, yeah this is going nowhere uh, the eyes of Medusa is the sixth song which is you know um, it is pretty straightforward it is a bit similar to, to uh, Pharaoh I, I think I didn't describe the song but uh, I'm gonna describe the song with the eyes of Medusa both songs are really really progressive uh, they don't really have that power metal vibe to them but I, but I also just love progressive metal. It is, you know, my favorite genre, uh, subgenre, progressive rock and metal. So I really love that these uh, songs both are more progressive in a way, and that they both, you know, cover a lot of ground. Not a not as much as the accolade because they are shorter. But I really love, you know, that uh, that these songs play together, back to back, are really consistent, and they show, you know, a, a lot of consistency and. Um, you know they flow really good that, that is the thing that I really like about these songs they really flow together well and they make for a great consistent piece uh, then we have one short song uh, The Witching Hour which is four minutes long well short for a progressive band you know not for the pop music industry but there we are that, that, uh, <laughs> that is like 20 minutes but, uh, but yeah The Witching Hour is a um, a bit of a slower song it is basically a really really long transition for a really really long song so there's not a lot to talk about here it is just basically hyping you up for the immense title track of this record which is the Define wings of tragedy oh my god this song is 20 minutes and for um 42 seconds long and yeah it is separated into seven parts at the four corners of the earth is part one in the room of thrones part two part three a gathering of angel part four angels part four the red divine part five the prophet's cry part six bringer of the Ap apocalypse eve of sacrifice arms in the sky dies ray and part eight paradise regained <sighs> fucking hell that, that is a mouthful, believe me, but uh, we really, really get something special here. Uh, you know, part one is just really epic, uh, like you're going to heaven or something. It is really heavenly. I really love that. Part two is uh, instrumental. Uh, really, really heavy, fast-paced, uh, heavy metal in your face. Really, uh, yeah, we also get, you know, a bit more straightforward power metal on this track and some more progressive uh, moments on this uh, instrumental. I really love it. Uh, part 3 is really epic, part 3 just slams you on the ground and just, you know, continue with, con continues with that. Uh, part 4, you know, a bit of the same, but it actually goes a, a bit more progressive. I really love that about the Red Divine, it actually, you know, it goes a bit back to that instrumental vibe. 
uh, although maintaining that power metal vibe to it, I really love it. Uh, the Prophet's Cry, uh, it's it slows it down a bit, but you know it still is heavy. It still is fast paced. It still you know um, it's, it still really shows what the album is all about. The Divine Wings of Tragedy. It really is a long song, but you know once you get through all the parts, it really pays off. It really does. Uh, part six is another instrumental, and this. Um, it's just basically, um, you know, a, a continuation of part 3, which is, you know, epic instrumental playing. It really is fast paced and, you know, the ending instrumental is, again, really soothing, like the uh, original part 1 at the four corners of the earth, which was really, really uh, soothing. It was really uh, heavenly sounding. It was really relaxing and we, we get back to that. We, we we get back to that and then we get part seven which is the pair uh, which is paradise regained and this is just basically a uh, farewell so or a, a farewell part just uh, waving goodbye <coughs> just you know saying farewell um yeah and this just perfectly closes out the title track of the of this masterpiece it really is i did said you know that uh, something with uh i i forgot the the title already fucking hell uh, Lady of the Snow or something like that from uh, from the last record. I said to me that that was my favorite song, but this song fucking rapes that song. It yeah, it is not healthy uh, healthy how uh, how fucking good this song is. I really love it. The Divine Wings of Tragedy is a masterpiece in in every sense of the word. I love it. It is a seven part masterpiece. Listen to it right now if you have nothing to do. Yeah, you actually clicked on this video, so you have not, nothing to do. So, go listen to that song, click on this video, li like it of course, but uh, just go listen to that title track, man. Go listen to the entire record, you will not be disappointed. And, you know, after that masterpiece, we still have one more song to go, which is Candlelight Fantasia, and this song is really, really dark, it's really spooky. Uh, it's basically a continuation of the the opener, which is of Sins and Shadows, but it's it covers more ground, it is more epic, um, it is more progr progressive in a way, and I really love that the song is uh, spooky. Uh, well, spooky. Uh, it, it, it is really dark, you know, it's really ha haunting, it's really morbid. Well, not morbid, but it is really dark, uh, but in the same way uplifting, because, you know, it is a power metal band. And it just really closes, it, it, it works It works more Works more as a credit song, it really uh, defines the Divine Wings of Tragedy, no pun intended. Uh, it, it is just basically the credit song, but it is one of the finest songs on the record. Of course, it doesn't beat the, the, the Divine Wings of Tragedy, but it still, you know, comes close. Uh, probably as a second, uh, probably in second place. I really love this uh, this closing song. It is great. I love it. And yeah, guys, that was the record. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I di I didn't think I would I would enjoy it that much, but it it really is great, man. It is a great record. I love it, and you should check it out. It is it is a masterpiece. I love it. It is the best Symphony X record in my opinion that I've heard so far. And yeah. Definitely check it out, man. If you if if you have nothing to do and, and you love metal, check out this uh, this record. It is great. Yeah, my rating for it is a ten. I just love this record, man. I really love you know every song on it. Of Sins and Shadows is great. Sea of Lies is great. Out of the Ashes is epic. The Accolade is epic. Uh, Pharaoh, The Eyes of Medusa, and The Witching Hour are great songs. The The Findings of Tragedy is a godly masterpiece and candlelight fantasia is a fantastic closer this album is perfect i love it um yeah just check it out man it is great it is consistent it is progressive it is power metal um it is heavenly because of the power metal and because it is so progressive yeah and it is just a great record man i love it um just check it out man I really think this is the best record and if they can top this yeah that must be really something special but I don't think they're gonna top this but they can always try right I hope you have enjoyed this album review let me know what you think about Symphony X's The Divine Wings of Tragedy I think it is an ultimate masterpiece in the truest form but maybe you disagree maybe you have another opinion about the record maybe you hate Symphony X maybe you hate this record let me know in the comments down below I'm um, 
yeah, I would gladly uh, like to know that about your opinion about the record, about Symphony X. And let me know which what album you want me to review next. What uh, yeah, metal, rock, pop, jazz, blues, uh, techno. Let me know in the comments down below, and I will do it. Well, I will discuss it with you. Accept, decline it, but you can always try, right? You can always try. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about this record. Let me know what you think about Symphony X. They are a great band in my opinion. And take care. I hope you've enjoyed it.